can now turn your recording devices on. So, uh, our, our September 2018 Corrections Officer of the Month recipient, James Neal, please join me in the podium. James is currently assigned to work at the pretrial detention facility, also known as our jail. More specifically, he works in the administrative transportation unit. Today, we are not recognizing James for one specific task, but for the overall approach to his job. Now, I know most of you are probably wondering what someone assigned to work in the administrative transportation unit does. Well, let me explain. James drives to the prison each shift to pick up inmates who are scheduled for court, those who are at the end of their sentence, and inmates scheduled for medical, medical and dental appointments at the jail. After that, he transports sentence inmates to the prison and inmates to appointments in other areas of the city. To make sure he maintains a strict schedule, James arrives to work early to ensure he has enough time to inspect his vehicle before his rounds for the day. Additionally, twice a week, James joins a team of correctional officers who collectively transport state sentenced inmates to Lake Butler. Correction Sergeant Kenneth Robinson had this to say, he is a consummate professional, self-motivated, ultimate team player who strives to do his best for the Sheriff's Office and himself. When he is not working, James volunteers his free time to assist the Police Athletic League of Jacksonville with their Friday Night Live program. This program aims to build positive relationships between law enforcement and the youth in the community. James also volunteers to work at the Sheriff's Watch Safety Fairs, where he brings a prisoner transport bus and a van for the public to view and tour. He also explains to the members of the public the different opportunities available in corrections transportation. James, thank you for your dedication to your job. Keep up the great work. I'm honored to award you the Corrections Officer of the Month for September 2018. So the Correctional Officer of the Month award is sponsored by the JM Family Enterprises. And I'd like to invite Mark Lunsford to the podium. Good morning. It's an honor to be here today to recognize Officer Neal for his outstanding service to our community. Um, JM family and myself, thank you for what you do and uh, keep up the good work. We have a small token of our appreciation here, a gift card and a pen, and uh, thank you for what you do. Reserve Lieutenant uh, Paul Wolf to please join me up here at the podium to receive the 2018 Reserve Officer of the Month Award. <laughs> Paul, like all of our reservists, volunteers his time to this agency and our community. Today we are recognizing him for his overall dedication to the city and his willingness to help when called upon. In 2017, Paul worked a total of 725 hours in a reserve capacity. He is on track to have the same number of hours this year. As of last Monday, September 17th, Paul had already volunteered more than 500 hours since January 1st. So let me break this down for you. Reservists must work 240 hours a year to fulfill their commitment to the JSO. Keep in mind, many of them do this in addition to having their own full-time job. Let me tell you how he spends his volunteer hours. For one, Paul helps train new reserve officers, which uh, we're all looking for more reservists for you citizens. If you wanna, if you wanna come out to help us with our mission, you can join us at uh, joinjso.com. 
But about Paul, in June of 2017, he received his bike certification and volunteered to serve as the bike coordinator within the reserve unit. Under his supervision, the reservists with patrol bicycle training have worked numerous special events such as the annual Florida versus Georgia football classic and the Jaguars football games. They also on occasion ride with their own patrol bike officers assigned to downtown. Paul takes his commitment as a reserve officer seriously, even when he is not working. On Monday, May 28th of this year, while Paul was with his family, he witnessed a traffic crash involving two vehicles. After calling 911, Paul checked on the driver of the vehicle. One of the drivers was an elderly man complaining of chest and leg pains. As he was attempting to calm the driver down, another citizen began screaming that the driver needed to get out of the car because the vehicle was on fire. But in reality, it was the smoke from the airbags. But Paul stayed with him and reassured the driver and told him not to move. He kept him calm until rescue responded and patrol units arrived. Paul, first and foremost, thank you for serving in this leadership role in our reserve unit. I commend you for your dedication, hard work, and for generously giving your time to this city. I'm honored to present you with the September 2018 Reserve Officer of the Month Award. So the Reserve Officer of the Month Award is sponsored by G4S Solutions, uh, and unfortunately their representative could not be here today, so we will make sure that you get your uh, your gift that they give, they sponsor. Family and friends? I've got my beautiful wife of 20 years here. Beautiful wife, 20 years? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I couldn't do a lot of this without my employer, employer which is Comcast, and I've got uh, my director, Eric Woods, here. Thank you. <laughs> my great captain, you all know him, Charlie Wall. Charlie Wall. So next, uh, with our September 28th Police Supervisor of the Month, Police Sergeant Ed Howard, Please join me at the podium. Ed is a supervisor in Patrol Zone 3 located on the south side of the city. Today he is being recognized for his leadership role in devising and executing a plan that ended that or that led to the capture of a serial armed robbery suspect. Following a three-month hiatus earlier this year, the suspect became active again in late spring and was targeting locations on the city's south side. Ed outlined a plan of action in response to the robberies, and during the evening hours of Saturday, June 16th, he supervised the stakeout at two different locations that were thought to be possible targets. Around a quarter to nine that night, officers stationed in the area of a popular pizza chain saw an individual walk by the front of the business several times and look in the windows. The officers alerted Ed of the individual's unusual behavior and that they thought a crime was likely to occur at this location in the near future. Ed directed the officers to take a tactical position in preparation for the takedown. Moments later, the individual returned to the business armed and with a mask on. The officers allowed the suspect to follow through with the robbery and waited until he left the business to take him into custody to make sure that no innocent bystanders got hurt in the process. Fortunately, the suspect complied with the officer's orders and he was taken into custody without incident. Following the apprehension, Ed coordinated with detectives, ensured that all of the evidence was properly secured and the witnesses were detained for questioning. Ed's immediate supervisor, Police Lieutenant Richard Kinnick, had this to say, due to an excellent job of preparing the officers and overseeing the operation, a suspect that was responsible for a one-man crime wave was arrested on numerous felony charges. To date, a total of six armed robberies to businesses have been linked to the suspect in Duval County, and two more cases have been attributed to him in St. Johns County. Ed, thank you for, your, for leading the way for your officers and for help getting this individual off the street. I'm 
honored to present with you the September 2018 Police uh, Supervisor of the Month Award. So the uh, Police Supervisor of the Month Award is sponsored by Steinmark and uh, Sean Finley. Good morning. Good morning. On uh, behalf of Steinmark, uh, it's a privilege for us to get to sponsor this award every month. We get a chance to come down here and hear the stories that don't necessarily make it out in the media of the great job that you guys do every single day. So on behalf of Steinmark, uh, myself, we'd like to present you with this plaque and a gift certificate, and thank you for uh, the job that you do. Thank you. Thank you. two honorees were selected uh, for recognition by their peers. Today they will each receive a peer achievement ribbon which represents a degree of competency, excellence, or professionalism, and most importantly, the recipient's dedication to this agency. So with the following people, please join me at the podium when I call your name. Police Officer Richard Santoro and Police Officer Brandon Shea. So for our next recognition of the day, I'd like to invite Detective Jason Richmond and Detective Aaron Huselton to the podium. So Jason and Aaron are assigned to work as part of our organized retail crime task force. This means that they investigate organized crime, which includes retail crime rings and professional shoplifting. Today, they're each receiving a certificate of commendation for their efforts throughout a lengthy investigation into an organized retail crime group. Starting in December of 2016, it was learned that suspects were stealing large quantities of health and beauty merchandise, as well as printers and copy ink from multiple chain retail and supermarket locations in Jacksonville. After a lengthy investigation, these two were able to identify the multiple online stores that were selling the stolen merchandise and most importantly, they were able to identify all eight suspects in this organized crime ring, including the main suspect. The numbers really put this in perspective. This crime ring had stolen and sold more than $500,000 in merchandise. This duo standing up here today utilized multiple investigative techniques in an effort to catch the suspects in the act and to gather enough evidence and probable cause to present the case to the prosecutor. Ultimately, in the spring of 2018, Jason and Aaron obtained a search warrant for the resident of the main suspect, as well as arrest warrants for all eight suspects. On Thursday, May 3rd, with the help of our law enforcement partners, the search warrant was executed and five of the eight suspects were taken into custody at that time. During the search of the main suspect's house, $53,000 of stolen merchandise and more than $11,000 in cash were seized. I'm happy to report that the remaining suspects were apprehended, and thanks to the meticulous documentation conducted throughout the investigation, the statewide prosecutor charged the suspects with RICO, 
or the Racketeer Influenced or Corrupt Organization Act, which is a U.S. federal law that provides for extended criminal penalties and a civil cause of action for acts performed as part of an ongoing criminal organization. In the end, the main suspect in this case was charged with 60 felony counts, including RICO, dealing in stolen property, and grand theft, in addition to 16 misdemeanor charges. Jason and Aaron, I applaud your efforts during this lengthy investigation, and I'm honored to present you each with a certificate of commendation. Today, I'm honored to recognize Tammy Pasquale and Melina Magrinelli. So if you would please come up to the podium. So Tammy is the Regional Community Ambassador for Mission Barbecue in Orange Park. Melina is the Community Ambassador and Catering, Man Catering Manager for Mission Barbecue at the St. John's Town Center. So if you haven't visited Mission Barbecue, if you're sitting there uh, eating uh, um, at, at 12 noon, they stop everything and they play the National Anthem, which is, which is good in my book. So um, they also have uh, memorabilia for law enforcement uh, partners and uh, Jack's Fire and Rescue, and they've even got some of our stuff up on the wall, so we really appreciate that. So we are fortunate to have Tammy and Melina working in our community and grateful for their support of local law enforcement. These two have helped facilitate catering for our officers who have responded to large scale incidents. And they also assist with food for some of our events such as our Sheriff's Watch chair and co-chair meetings. So Tammy and Melina, thank you so much for partnering with us and helping us achieve our mission each day. I'm honored to present you with certificates of appreciation for the job well done. I'd like to recognize someone that was recently appointed to a new rank on the Sheriff's Staff Wood Police Chief Andre A. U. Please join me. Y'all catch the strut walk. <laughs> so Andre has been a member of the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office since September of 1995. During his 23 years here, he has moved up the ranks and served in various areas in the agency, including patrol and the investigations division. He also served as a lieutenant in our field training office. Under Sheriff Rutherford's administration, Andre had the opportunity to serve as the assistant chief in central records and in patrol zone one. In September 2016, Andre joined Sheriff Williams' staff as the assistant chief of special events and in June, the sheriff asked him to oversee the day-to-day -day operations as chief of the entire special events division. I should mention that Andre is no stranger to accolades. He has received numerous commendations for his work during large-scale events, such as the search for the suspect Christopher Scott Kilgore in 2010, and then for his assistance developing programs such as the Chronic Homeless Offender Program known as CHOP. Andre, I have no doubt, you will continue to make us proud. Congratulations and keep up the great work. It is my beautiful wife, Monica, my son's Asher. 
Curtin Neal, I had to bring my pastors, Bruce Jones and Dale Tedder. Thank you all for coming. Mental note, guys, you guys have gotten it right so far. No, I'm telling you, so when you go home and the real sheriff of your life. She, she runs the house. Yeah. See, the guys that get it are all looking at me going. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, next, I'd like to recognize individuals who have recently re uh, reached an important uh, employment anniversary with the JSO, celebrating 30 years of employment. Oh my gosh, it's a long time. With the agency, with communications technology coordinator Vicki Diaz and police officer Tim Chapin, join me in the podium. Tim, I would play nice <laughs> because we went to school together. So I will, I'll be nice. <laughs> yes, I did that out of fear. <laughs> what Tim may say. Five years of employment with the agency with the following employees please join me in the podium corrections officer john gibbons police sergeant brad gitcom and police officer donald roberts have a what's called a, a retirement uh, a celebration in which we bring individuals in that have recently retired or are about to retire. Uh, this last time uh, there wasn't a lot of people that could attend on that date so we're going to recognize one of the individuals that would have been recognized at that time today. So uh, with that being said, Correction Sergeant Richard Barth, please join me in the podium. Richard, I want to thank you for your dedication to this agency and your distinguished 24-year career that was marked with honesty and excellence. I know you've seen a lot of changes over the years from new faces to new policies and procedures. And we've all seen a lot of that. So Richard, I sincerely hope that you leave here with fond memories and great stories to share with future generations. Congratulations on your retirement. gentlemen that is the end of today's ceremony I encourage each of you to share the stories that you've heard here today whether it is through conversation with a neighbor or on social media we 
want people to hear about the good work in our in our community and the best way is through word of mouth I also want to take a moment to thank our sponsors thank you to Publix for providing refreshments that we have for you um, for all of our monthly uh, meritorious award ceremonies these ceremonies provide the agency with an opportunity to personally thank our people who do great work day in and day out we value all of our corporate partners who make this event special for the honorees and their families thank you and uh, feel free um, at the end of the uh, ceremony um, to get some refreshments in closing I'd like to congratulate all our Jacksonville Sheriff's Office honorees and the citizens who are honored here today thank you